Welcome, welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here today uh, for, uh, we have a great conversation. Start about Drive My Car, Oscar nominated, four Oscar nominations, um, a wonderful, wonderful film. Um, so glad that we have the director here, Reisuko Hamaguchi is here. And uh, so excited to have you here. I've seen this film twice. Oh, thank you very much. It is just an amazing film um, to go through so much with about trauma, and it seems to be resonating right now with so many people. Um, that's one of the things that I'd like to talk to you about. Uh, one of the first questions is, why do you think this film is particularly re resonating right now? Um, so in terms of the reaction uh, from people that it's resonating with, this actually has me very surprised as well. Um, but in the way that I think about it, I think it's the universality uh, of the narrative is what is appealing to people. In that, this is a story about something that could happen to anyone. When we think about leading a fulfilled life, this means that you have either people or things in your life around you that you love. Uh, but having this love also means that at some point you're going to have to uh, separate or be uh, separated from these people or things, uh, which means that the deep joy that you experience in life uh, will eventually turn into some sort of deep pain. They really are uh, two sides of the same coin. This is a contradiction in life that and something that we all face. Um, so I think that probably for a lot of people, um, they are reconciling with this moment or this theme uh, within uh, the film. Uh, and that's something that is also seen throughout the works of um, Haruki Murakami, uh, which is the source material. Well, there also seems to be within your work as well, that there's a lot of discussion about trauma. And, um, you know, you uh, had did the Waves um, trilogy for the documentaries and talking about that and, and talking about dealing with trauma. And you have such a great way of being so intimate with the details with that, with people expressing themselves completely. Um, mm -hmm. What is it about that that draws you as a filmmaker and as a screenwriter to, to subjects about trauma? Um, so when you pointed that out in terms of the theme of trauma that appears in my work, uh, I thought to myself, oh, that's right. Uh, the trauma is something that, that does that does appear throughout my work. Um, it's not something that I'm consciously thinking of um, having trauma as a theme. Uh, that being said, when we talk about things like um, natural disasters or war, uh, trauma is something that naturally emerges from these things. Um, it's something that as people we have to live through. Everyone on this earth has some sort of trauma. If you have a past, it means that there's some trauma in your life. Uh, living basically equals uh, having uh, trauma or scars. That's something that you can't avoid by being a, a living person. Uh, but this is not something that we are particularly uh, conscious of. Uh, in my films, I really look at how characters are um, going to get through the problems that they're dealing with. Essentially, what is their path of hope? Uh, what is going to guide them to um, some sort of hope? And I think that uh, in some way, it just ends up being, uh, when I look at this, um, in this, in the pursuit of this, it goes back to their past um, and the uh, trauma that they encounter when they uh, turn to their past. But I think actually more than the past, it's the struggle for them to find this hope that they're looking for uh, in the future, how they're going to arrive at this place where they have hope in the future. That's great. Um, the, the, what I'm very interested with, with some of your films, you, you have such a great way of being that intimate that I was talking about a little bit earlier about you have the intimacy with your characters. This film has a lot of scenes in a car. <laughs> what, I, what I did see that was really interesting is how a photo of how you filmed in the car. And there was like a stockpile of people. There were so many people <laughs> in the back of a car getting this very intimate scene. Is that hard to do? Uh, you are correct that it is quite difficult to film uh, in a car. Uh, we have a very narrow space, and then when we add uh, the lighting and other film equipment, this very narrow space becomes even tighter. Uh, so it's not an easy feat. Um, on top of that, the I think for the actors, they have the, har the hardest burden because they have to ignore all these things surrounding them. But of course, in order to create the scene, they have to uh, perform. Uh, but I think when we talk about this physical closeness, um, and there has to be some sort of, uh, there, there is some sort 
sort of influence, a mutual influence uh, between the uh, people in this space. Um, and I think that in certain cases, in regards to communication, you really need to have uh, mutual respect because without that, uh, it confined in this closed space, it's not going to be the most comfortable position. Uh, but if you do have this, um, again, mutual uh, respect, it, this is very important. Uh, this goes for the cast and the staff as well. You're able to create those intimacies uh, that we're talking about. Um, personally, when I do these uh, car scenes, I'm actually uh, in the trunk, giving, uh, connecting with my actors uh, directly. We're going, um, I'm seeking them back and forth uh, from there. Um, so in this case, the physical space is actually uh, quite important, as is our um, relationship. Yeah, we say that's good because that you are in such tight quarters. Also, this is an amazing output to have two films that were so superior to a lot of films to have both come out the same year, The Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy, which is a wonderful, wonderful film as well. And and this film, which is which is a masterpiece, <laughs> you know, I just, oh, thank you, you know, I just to see that to have two of the things, and you were shooting under conditions of COVID at the same time. Were you juggling two films at once? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so these were uh, the plants were started in uh, 2019, but uh, the two films were really uh, quite interwoven. Um, initially, before COVID, I had done uh, it's, it's a three part uh, omnibus film. I had done uh, two of the stories and then was preparing to move to drive my car, the shooting for that film. However, we had to uh, pause due to COVID, and that actually ended up being an eight month break. Uh, so during that time, I moved back to the third story of um, Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy, uh, and then after that, I returned back to do the filming, uh, the shooting for Drive My Car. Um, so there really was um, a, a relationship where they did uh, influence each other. This was quite strong. Um, when I think about Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy, it almost was like a uh, prep, a way of prepping for my uh, feature film. This was something that I conceived uh, on my own. It was an independent plan uh, that I carried uh, through with. So it was one thing that I was able to work on uh, completely. We had a very small team uh, working on this. Uh, but not to say that this was only in preparation for Drive My Car. Uh, we had a very long rehearsal time for Wheel of Fortune fortunate fantasy and I think it really came out uh, quite well thanks to the performances of the wonderful actors um, I really it's hard for me to say uh, which film I love more I really am I'm very happy and you have good reason to be <laughs> for that as well hey you know what when I, I read, read an interview and you talked about a little bit, a little bit about how Uncle Vanya was not. You didn't take in the story, short story. Uncle Vanya's scenes were not as much in the short story as they are in the film. But the film seems to really benefit from having those. I mean, it's there's there's a great foretelling. There's just a lot of things in there. How did you, as a writer, discover that? Did you say you you knew that before with Uncle Vanya, but or did you go back and say, "Wow, this is such a, a rich." Uh, rich, rich to include into the story, into into the screenplay. It's uh, So in terms of the uh, what you indicated in terms of the uh, Uncle Vanya in the short story, if you put all the mentions together, it would only come to about half a page. So it was quite uh, limited. Um, of course, I had read the play before, but knowing that uh, thinking would be a good play for the film, I went back and reread it, and I was really struck by the fact that. Um, uh, what the lines that Vanya had really corresponded uh, quite well to uh, Kafuku uh, and his feelings. Um, so that I thought this was something that would be a very good for uh, Drive My Car. Uh, this is actually in the connection though between Uncle Vanya and Drive My Car um, was in the short story from Haruki Murakami. Uh, this connection was originally there, um, but I was really struck when I read it, um, not only the connection between Kafuku and Vanya, but between uh, the character Misaki and Sanya as well. Uh, this was something that became uh, really clear to me uh, when I read read it uh, to the point that Misaki actually um, uses some of Sanya's lines. Uh, there's a very clear uh, connection there. So there were distinct parallels between the worlds of Drive My Car and the world of Uncle Vanya. Um, so in terms of the world of Drive My Car, um, what I needed to do was to um, how the audience would be able to interpret the, um, the inner feelings of these characters who don't really speak very much. Uh, this is something that had to be conveyed. So Vanya became a tool for that in that the audience would be able to understand the uh, interior feelings of the characters. Uh, but really, I attribute it to the fact that um, Haruki Murakami in the original um, had this connection uh, with Chekhov. And I basically just uh, expanded that uh, or um, developed that a bit further. Um, one of the things that I've been asked by some people I, they, they, about the ending of the film and feeling like it's a little bit, it's a little open-ended and <laughs> where, where is, where, where 
what, what is actually transpiring with her going into the into the grocery store, getting her, getting her things, having the dog? Uh, was that intentional to have a little bit so it's open for impression? Um, so to be honest with you, I never really thought that uh, it would be interpreted uh, as such an open ending uh, when I made the film. Um, I actually had a very clear interpretation uh, of how the movie ended. Um, but I'm fine with people, uh, you know, interpreting it however however they choose to do so. Um, for me, the important thing was um, what Misaki would do after seeing the play uh, at the end of the film. Uh, that is, she moved on to a, a new place. Uh, it was a different time in her life. Uh, more than anything else, you could see on her face, she had this uh, bright expression, something that she had never uh, shown before. So the fact that she was able to do this, this was the important point there. And I really want to leave the audience with a uh, feeling of relief that they would feel okay saying goodbye to these characters at that point. Yeah, that, that's what, what I got. Somebody else came up to me and they had a whole different interpretation, which I think is very interesting, which is wonderful part of film and, and literature um but it, it but, but it did seem you you also have a cast that is just wonderful um, everybody that you had in the in the roles just really fit well um, was it hard to cast this film um, so I'm very happy uh, to hear that uh, people have uh, said that, that you're saying this about the uh, the actors fitting so well into their roles. Uh, I think really the reason the movie is getting the reception it is is thanks to their uh, wonderful performances. I do feel this from the bottom of my heart. Uh, in terms of the casting, we really looked at it uh, individually for each character. And the fact that each one uh, was able to be casted uh, so perfectly, it's, it's close to a miracle. Uh, because it's not always guaranteed that you're going to have these encounters or you're going to be matched with the people who fit so well into their roles. Uh, I can say that I really did did, uh, or was able to cast uh, who I wanted to for each individual character. Uh, I think part of that too is that the actors really came to these roles uh, individually um, with this movie that being a potential turning point. They really um, gave everything to these roles. Um, and again, it's very rare to have these sort of encounters or um, interactions with actors. It really was a um, unique, wonderful experience for me. Um. Well, it's a unique experience, the film itself. It's a wonderful film. Um, like I said, I hope that we hear your name many times during mm -hmm. Oscar night <laughs> when it comes up. And I think most of the people will agree with that. So thank you so much for taking the time out. Suko. It's just such a great film. And I just hope that you uh, people will seek out your other films too. Happy Hour is a wonderful film. Uh, it's it, Asuko uh, one and two. All, all your, your, your filmography just keeps on getting more vibrant and we can wish you continued success. So thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Randy. Thank you for your questions. Thank you.